Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to take a look at creating this concentric circles effect. So quite an interesting effect that uses some unusual and useful ideas. So let's make a start. So let's start a new project. This is going to be 192080, 25 frames a second, duration of four seconds. And the first thing I'm going to do is just paste in some text to save us a bit of time. Next, I want to come over to the library and add generators and concentric shapes, this one here. So what I'm going to do is switch the color type to gradient. And I'm also going to switch this gradient handling to repeat. Then we can open up the gradient. Let's make this left-hand one red. Let's make this one here green. And let's move it over a bit like that. And let's click to make another one round about here. And let's make this one blue. Let's select the red one and set the interpolation to constant. You can see that makes an abrupt transition to the green there. Select the green one and do the same. And that'll make an abrupt transition to the blue. So just to tidy this up, let's set the location of the green to 33% and the location of the blue to 66%. We were pretty close, but might as well be accurate. So this is actually going to provide our mask. And I'm just going to drag that out into a new group. And I'm going to call this matte. And I'm going to take the concentric shapes. Uh, let's set the width, I think, to something like 80. And let's come to the phase and add parameter behavior ramp. And let's set the end value to something like 400. And now we're getting these radiating circles in these three different colors. So let us turn off that matte group, close it down. Let's take our text group and add an image mask to it. And let's use our matte and let's switch to red. And if this is what you're seeing, it's because you've made the understandable mistake of assuming that Apple know how to handle color processing. And you'll need to come over to the project settings and switch the color processing to standard gamut SDR. In the two other modes, this functionality is broken. OK, so another thing I want to do is take my image mask and come down to stylize and min max and have a radius of three for that. It'll just shrink that down a little bit. So then I'm going to take my text and I'm going to clone it. So right click, make clone layer, drag that out into a new group. And then let's copy this mask and paste it onto the new group there. And for this new one, let's select green as the channel. So then what we can do is duplicate this new group, right click, duplicate and set the image mask to blue. And there we go. We've filled back in our text. So then I'm going to take my top group here. I'm going to come to its Y position and I'm going to add parameter behavior, oscillate. I'm going to set the speed to something like 20 and have an amplitude of 10. And then I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it onto the bottom group and I'm going to set the amplitude to negative 10. And that'll just create this sort of disturbing dislocation of those layers. So then let's give it a little bit of color and let's select the top group. Uh, let's come to color and colorize. Uh, let's leave it at that. Let's select the middle group. Again, okay, let's have colorize. And let's, let's set it to something different. I don't know, ice, is that any good? Maybe not sky, let's go for sky. And uh, let's add a colorize to the other one. Colorize, and what do we go for here? Let's go for tangerine. A little bit gross, but we're going to turn, turn this down later on. So then I'm going to close all these up, and I'm going to make a new group, object new group, and I'm going to put all of these inside there. Then to this group, I'm going to add filters and uh, glow and neon. You've probably seen me do this before, but uh, I, I like this technique and I'm going to keep using it until you're fed up with it. Turn the outer brightness and the inner brightness down to nothing. And then turn the outer glow down to five. And you'll see that that's kind of outlined all of those shapes. It's made it a lot more interesting. So turn that on and off, much more interesting. 
The other thing I want to do, and I should have done it earlier on really, is to come into the first group here, filters, blur, and radial blur. Now I need to turn the group to fixed resolution and let's come into the radial blur. Let's set its mix value to something like 10. And then let's copy this radial blur onto the next group up, Alt or Option drag it onto there. And let's just maybe increase that angle to 60 for this one. And let's Alt or Option drag it onto the last one. And let's set this angle to 90. So now we've got the groups behaving very differently from each other. Obviously I needed to set both of those other groups to fixed resolution like that, because you see it was being chopped off. So let's do a little bit of animation. Let's come to around eight frames. Let's open up these image masks so we can see those min-max filters. So let's select the first min-max filter and let's keyframe it there. Let's keyframe this one and keyframe this one. And then let's come to the first frame and then let's set the amount of this one, I don't know, to 10. Let's set the amount of this one to 20. And let's set the amount of this one to 30. And now if we press play, you'll see that they pop on like that. It's quite an interesting way of animating them on. What else can we do? We can come to this group here and we can add a sharp and unsharp mask. And you see that enhances the effect of those edges there. We can also add some noise. So stylize, add noise turn it up to the maximum, turn off auto animate and set this mix value down to about 10, maybe a little bit more. Let's have a look to 20 is probably good. Then I'm going to add one more filter here, come down to stylize and use circle screen. And you see that that's all much too much. But if we knock this mix value back to about 20 or maybe 30 even, it's kind of adding some interesting texture and it's also taking away some of that color, which I think is, is preferable really. So turn that on and off. We're getting more texture in there because of that circle screen. One other thing I'd like to do is to add a blur and zoom blur. Let's set the amount to something like 10 and the mix amount to something like five. And it's just going to give us a little bit of sort of subtle halation like that of the brighter bits doesn't want to be too much of a feature, but I think it just adds a little bit of something. So I think we should probably pop this add noise above everything else. So everything is getting the noise. And I want to come back to this circle screen. And I think on balance, I am going to prefer a lot more or even 100%. I think actually I do prefer that as a simple sort of black and white. It works better. And a couple of points before we finish, obviously, because we were using clones, we can change the text at any point just by re retyping this original text layer like that. And I'm sure you've thought of uh, loads of interesting ways in which we could add more animation to this. I'm going to show you a fairly obvious way. I'm going to come to 90 frames on the timeline, so 10 frames before the end. Keyframe the rotation, come to the last frame and set this to 180 and then it will do that kind of interesting rotation of, I mean, not very sophisticated, but we're talking about circles. Circles ought to rotate really, I guess. So there you go. I mean, even if you don't want to recreate exactly this animation, hopefully that's given you enough ideas to create something interesting of your own. So thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.